So by the time I was 12 years old, I was already a Native American warrior, a ninja, and a marine biologist, all because my parents encouraged my passion for science, and they tolerated my passion for play. My passion for gamification led to successful seasons in the Boy Scouts, learning how to mail order ninja equipment without parental supervision. <laughs> Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> and becoming a college professor in biological sciences. But what if there were a cheat code for success? In Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo Entertainment System, you were given three opportunities to rescue the princess, and defeat the evil Bowser, which was close to impossible for most people, until one guy discovered a cheat code that gave you nearly 100 chances to do the exact same thing. So let's talk today about how success is only one cheat code away. Now, I know some of you are kind of looking at me like, oh, I don't know, I'm not with this yet. So let's talk about a few facts. Out of the top 31 developed countries in the world, with number 31 being the bottom, the U.S. currently ranks 17th in science scores and 25th in math scores. There are 14 and a half million middle school students, and by the time they graduate from high school, they will have played over 10,000 hours in video games. Four out of five homes in the U.S. currently have at least one device, designated to playing games. So what does this look like? What are, we, what are we getting into? What is happening here? We're seeing a bit of a shift. It's known as gamification. Gamification is when I apply game elements to a task or activity that increases engagement and productivity. Educators and corporate America are already tapping into this phenomenon. Because, I mean, really, seriously, what teacher would not want to hear their students beg them for more math homework? <laughs> and what manager wouldn't want their employees to beg them to help increase productivity? How many of you send emails out and get no replies? <laughs> I second that motion. There's a company called Baden, which created a game called the email game. And in the email game, you get three minutes to either respond or resolve an email. Once you do that, you gain points toward real prizes. I teach anatomy and physiology in college, and I can teach the anatomy of the heart in just 10 minutes with nothing more than eight student volunteers and a soul train line. Sounds kind of silly, but no, really, it works. Each one of the eight students represents a different part of the heart. They use hand signals in order to show the different functions that each one carries out. And the blood cells dance down the soul train line. <laughs> Sounds silly. It is. But my students never forget it. So when we look at this and we say, how do we know that gamification actually works? Well, there's actually three things that need to happen if gamification is working for you. The first thing is that gamification should increase receptivity to learning. The second thing is that gamification should change the learning process into a learning experience. And the third thing is that gamification should motivate you to learn. So let's talk about each one in a little detail. With gamification and reception. If you talk to successful people, most of them will admit that they learn just as much from losing as they do from winning. But when you look at the current equation for how we teach people uh, to how to learn, we seem to be devoid of the failure portion, what kind of leads us to ask the question, how do we allow people to fail safely? In Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo Entertainment System, remember, you had three lives to possibly rescue the princess, and defeat the evil Bowser. Now, the three lives wasn't the bad part of it. Really, what was bad was when your three lives were up, you started from the very beginning. You lost everything, and your previous successes did not matter. But in current gaming, like the Halo series and the Call of Duty series, you're encouraged to play beyond that obstacle over and over again in order to overcome it. 
This creates an equation that looks a little bit like this. Perseverance plus skills plus purpose equals personal growth. That player perseveres to get beyond that obstacle. They gain skills once they've overcome that obstacle. And once they understand how that skill is applied, they gain purpose with that skill, therefore gaining personal growth. An example of this would be World of Classcraft, not World of Warcraft, World of Classcraft, created by a physics teacher that actually increases positive attitudes within the classroom. Why? Because research has already shown that the happier you are, the more you learn. The second attribute is that gamification can make the learning process an experience. Everyone say this term with me. Neural plasticity. Neural plasticity. Ah, I got my smart professor on. <laughs> Neural plasticity is really nothing more than a fancy way of saying that your brain grows as you engage it in activity. The hippocampus, which is highlighted on the image behind me, is a part of your brain that does just that. That structure of the brain was measured in New York cab drivers. And what they found was that it was significantly larger in their brains than it was in everyone else in New York. What was even stranger was when those cab drivers retired, it shrunk. So what we wind up seeing here is that activity and intelligence have a direct combination. We can see this attribute in an app known as the Zombies Run app. In the Zombies Run app, they combine zombie apocalypse story episodes with three levels of activity, walking, jogging, and running. Just think of it as the Walking Dead meets Fitbit. <laughs> the third thing that allows us to know that gamification is doing its job well is that gamification motivates us to learn. The Raise Me program is another example of this. The Raise Me program allows students to go online, log in, and keep a general record of all the activities that they do from week to week. What's really cool about this is that there are over 140 colleges participating in it right now, and these students are able to gain micro-scholarships. So a 10th grader may become a leader on their sports team and get $200. They may go to visit a local college campus and get $300. They may take AP Biology and get $175. And the list goes on and on and on. It teaches those high school students about microfinance, but it also teaches them that process and procedure are just as important as the destination. Now, with everything, there are some questions. And they have yet to be resolved such as, if gamification is all that, then does that make Mario, Minecraft, and Milton Bradley educators? Who's the actual teacher in this situation? And how does gamification compare to traditional models in teaching? Well, we currently have some pioneers and supporters for gamification who are answering those questions for us. Entities such as Gamification Co., Badgeville, Superbetter, and next high school. So we have three things that always lets us know when gamification is doing its job well. Gamification should increase receptivity to learning. Gamification should turn the learning process into an experience. And gamification should motivate us to learn. Many of you have probably heard of the story <laughs> about the four-year-old boy who became friends with the local UPS driver. Ultimately, the company UPS purchased the little guy his very own miniature UPS truck. Oh. <laughs> well, he didn't just stop there. He got his UPS uniform, set up his own UPS shop in his basement, and he packages cookies and other pastries to deliver them to his local neighbors. It's amazing because through play, he learned job skills and character traits. Which leads me to wonder, what would happen if gamification not only taught us job skills and objectives, but it also taught us integrity? You know, that's a game worth playing. Thank you.